What up, warriors of fartness? I bet you don't have the slightest clue how to play this eyeball-melting anime game. Oh, sure, you probably know that you can beat up enemies by clicking on them until they die, but do you know how to find a static in your FC to help you prog uwu? I bet you don't even know what any of those words mean, so sit down, shut up, and eat your gissel greens, because I'm gonna teach you what thee mayhap not knoweth, thy noobliness. Welcome to a crap guide to Final Fantasy. <laughs> The tank is the person in the front lines of every group, leading the charge to inevitable party wipes, which is because you are the most important person in the party, having slap fights with the boss since everybody else is way too squishy to handle the puss-pounding patty cake. You'll never see Jimmy's soft boots eyeing up the cloud of darkness with his 2x4 and scriggly tree branch, but how hard can tanking be? Turn on your tank stance, do your 1-2-3 combo, and blame the healers when you die, right? That sounds like somebody who needs their short Q privileges revoked. Firstly, tank stance. You turn this on to start gaining enmity. What's enmity? It's where you shout at the bad guys, Hey, hit me! They'll be paying attention to you so long as you're dealing damage, so you better be dealing damage and not just having a staring contest. If you don't, then they're gonna start indiscriminately charging at the rest of the party like a dog in a movie theater. If you are the designated main tank, or in light parties the only tank, make sure this is on. If there is another tank in the party and you are the off tank, make sure this is off, unless there's some other bad guys you gotta pull. If you have conflicting stances with the other tank, they will chuck their shoulder pads at you. As a tank, you should make sure the bad guy's ass is facing the party as often as possible, as indicated by the bright glowing half-eaten donut underneath the target. This is so that if the bad guy sneezes, you're the only one getting down with the sickness, and also so if your party has anyone playing any jobs that particularly likes to clap them cheeks, you've provided a bright shiny spanking space. On top of this, as a tank, you are by Heidelin's blessings horrible at dancing, which is why you should move as little as possible once you've got the enemy's attention. That way the party can continue to whap the wumpus without having to chase down the bad guy's glorious booty. Just as well, because you have control of where the baddies are, you control how useful everybody else is. So if somebody puts down a useful AoE, stop fucking running away from it! Now that you have the baddies' attention and are in a nice cozy poking position, you don't have to worry about anything else, right? Ah, that's what I thought you'd say, you dumb fucking horse! Believe it or not, when you die, it's not entirely the healer's fault, just mostly their fault. That little bit of responsibility you have is based on how well you can juggle mitigation. What's mitigation? It's the buttons that make the bad guy's slaps hurt less that you sometimes press once a subscription and never think about again. You ever wonder why you have several of those buttons that all seem like they do the same thing? Well, that's because you're supposed to space them out over the course of a fight so the healers don't have to sacrifice their entire mana pool and firstborn child to get your frail ass through the dungeon. Remember not to bust your tanking load all at once or else you're gonna feel a lot of shame when you're all out of juice and the boss still wants to go about four more rounds. Every tank also has a press X to not die button that can be used to survive any devastating attacks, or if you're a really aggressive paladin who drew every enemy in a dungeon ever and don't want the healer to hire a hitman on you. As for what your limit break does, tanks are thicker than the average Disney mom, to the point your honky chonky donkey bahonky extends to the rest of the party, protecting them from damage up to a whopping 80% at LB3. The thing is, unless you're a high-end player, you'll probably be using tank LB as frequently as a good player rolls high on loot. Overall, you have four flavors to choose from. Punk, grunge, metal, and Christian rock. There's warrior for big axes, big anger, big self-healing, and if you like to do fell cleaves, again and again. And again, and again, and again. If you prefer more brooding than cruding, the Dark Knight is great for doing your best guts impression. You get a huge ass sword, goopy black energy particle effects, and the literal best mitigation in the entire game. But it's balanced because they get the worst invulnerability button in the entire game. You press it, and then it makes you die. Gunbreaker is called a tank, but everybody knows it's just three DPS in a trench coat, as designated by the fact you get a fucking gun and your swings explode. But you have to be a hardcore gamer since it requires a lot of cartridges. And finally, the Paladin, who tries to pretend they're a healer and caster, but only when the other healers and casters are looking. But fuck all that, because the most important thing is that you get the motherfucking sword and shield, baby! Try getting behind this wall of holiness, bitch! Now you know how to play tank, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>